Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 20 of the Halloween Craft Countdown, which means sadly today is the last day of this year's countdown, but I hope I make up for it by this really, really beautiful craft. So this is a layered paper wreath for full and you can hang it up. It's got this little string on it and it's all different layers in there. So it is wonderfully 3D and very, very pretty. It also matches with the giant off the mat full sign and the layered pumpkin shadow box from the earlier videos in this series. So if you haven't watched them, go and check them out and you could make a matching set. Now this design comes in two separate versions. The first is the outline of the wreath and then you get all of the little pictures separate so you can decide the order in which you cut them and stick them together. So for example, you could do a wreath that's all sunflowers or all pumpkins, or do what I've done with a mixture of everything. The other file that you'll get for free, of course, is this exact design. So all of the little pictures are already positioned and sized for you. So you can cut it out and follow along with the assembly guide PDF to make your wreath look exactly like this. Whichever one you choose, the links to the free SVGs are in the description of this video. So let's jump into design space and see how to make it. When you download the Sunflower Wreath SVG from my website, it comes in two different versions. You can see them both in my recent uploads here. So you've got one, this first one, which is all complete with all of the flowers and pumpkins and leaves already placed and sized for you. And the other version is a more DIY version where it's all separate so that you can choose where you want to position everything on the wreath. For this project, I'm going to use the pre-made one so that I can show you how to do it according to the assembly guide PDF, which is also included. But before I show that, I just want to do a quick little introduction on how to use the DIY file. If you're not sure how to download the SVG files from my website, craftwithsarah.com, and then get them into Cricut Design Space. Check the description of this video as I'll link to a separate video in there which shows you how to do exactly that. But once you have loaded them in, you can just click it and then press Insert Images to put it onto the screen. This one loads in at the correct size, I'm pretty sure, but just to double check, look down the Layers panel until you find the actual outline of the wreath and this is showing at about 11.257 inches, which is pretty good. So the maximum your Cricut can cut is 11 and a half inches. So this is just under that maximum. If it didn't load in at the correct size, then click it and then go ungroup along the top. And then you can click the wreath and change it to whatever size you want to make it. And of course you could make it smaller if you wanted to, just change the size and then you'll probably also want to resize all of the shapes. So as this is the DIY version, all of the leaves are separate which means you can choose how you want your wreath to look. So you can just drag your images on and I want to make sure they appear above the wreath. So let's click the wreath and go arrange, centre back and now all of the pictures will appear on top. So what you can do is drag them into design space until they're where you want them to go on your wreath. And if you want to add more than one, you can click it and then press duplicate and that will make a copy. For your copies, you can rotate them. You can resize them to make them bigger or smaller. And you could even recolor them if you want to by clicking each of the layers within the group and changing the color up here. So this makes the wreath really flexible. You can make it however you want. So for example, you might want it to just have sunflowers and not have any pumpkins at all. Or maybe you want to make it completely full themed and only have the leaves and the pumpkins and no flowers. So take your time in getting all of the images exactly as you want them to appear. And then when you click make it, it will go and cut it all for you. If there are any images that you don't use, so for example, let's say I didn't use these berries, then you can just click it and press delete on your keyboard so that it doesn't cut those out. But as I said, I'm gonna use the pre-made design for my project in this video. So let's go back to that. I'll press select all here and delete it and then go into my uploads. And it's in my recent uploads, so I can just click it and then press insert images. 
Now for some reason, Design Space is loading this in a little bit smaller than it's supposed to be by default, so I want to make it a little bit bigger. Click the whole wreath and then change the width to 12.3 inches. Make sure the padlock is closed and then press return and it will resize everything in proportion. Now I did say a minute ago that the Cricut can only cut 11.5 inches and we've made it 12.3 but don't worry because that's the size of the whole wreath with all of the flowers and leaves and everything on. Your actual wreath base, if we just scroll down to the bottom and click it, is now 11.486 so it's still underneath that limit to cut with the Cricut. If you want to play it a little bit safer, you could make it 12.2 overall instead, and then your wreath will be 11.393. So that will still cut on a 12 by 12 piece of paper with your Cricut machine. We don't need to do anything else to this. Everything has been perfectly sized for you. So just click make it and it will split everything out into the different colors. So you can then cut everything out. I changed all of my paper to A4 because that's just what I have more of. So you need to do it for every single color if you want to change the paper size. And on some bits, you might find that it adds another page when you resize it, but you can click and drag the images around to use up less card. So this is a really handy tip for making the most of your materials. I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything out and then we'll see how to stick together our beautiful layered full wreath. Here are all the pieces of the wreath cut out and I've already stuck each of the layers together on the individual pieces just with some glue just to help speed up the video a little bit so you can see all of these layers are stuck. The glue I like to use for cardstock projects is called Kalal. It's really good because it doesn't bend or buckle the card like some other glues can do. And then I put it into these needle tip bottles which I get on Amazon. There's a link in the description of this video, but this really helps with all those little tiny pieces of glue because the tip is so thin. If you're in the USA, then good alternatives to Kalal glue are Art Glitter Glue and Barely Art Glue. I've also got a printout of how I'm going to stick all of this together. If you're using the completed wreath design, then you'll be able to get this guide too. Yours will look a little bit prettier than mine does, but... Uh, I haven't quite got around to making that look good yet. So I'm just gonna put that over to one side so I can see where I'm going to stick everything. Although of course it is completely up to you and you can put any of these images wherever you want. First things first though, we need to add our thread to the top so that we can hang the wreath up. I'm using a bit of twine, but you can use ribbon or um, elastic or actually that might not be good because it'll pull down but definitely ribbon or yeah twine like this or um, whatever you've got to hang your wreath up with. If you're going to be just sort of leaning it up against something rather than hanging it then you can leave this step out. So all I'm going to do is thread this through the two holes like this and then I will tie it into a bow. Now you can make it as long or as short as you want. I probably didn't quite make that big enough to get a nice little bow. <laughs> and also I'm terrible at making bows so this will probably go wrong. I probably should have cut that a bit thicker, longer. But anyway, that's the general idea. I'll probably tidy that up before it actually goes on the wall. But as long as you've got the, um, the twine in there for when you stick everything over the top, then that's all we really need at this point. All right, so I'm gonna stick all this together following the guide. And this shows you the rough places to put each of the different images that you have and again I'm not going to be completely exact but I'll try and get it roughly in the same place and I said this earlier but just to reiterate 
The outline that has all of the shapes on is just for decoration. We're not actually going to be lining the leaves and flowers up against these edges. Okay, so this is my very first layer and I'm gonna use glue for these ones as they're on the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could position everything and then start gluing it, but I'm just gonna do this step by step. Just a little bit of glue on the backs of these. And again, if I'm not 100% accurate with where it is on the guide, I'm okay with that. I probably shouldn't have put glue in the very top of that because it's going to be overlapping. Uh, never mind. And then in my picture, that's actually kind of over the hole a little bit. But I can't do that yet. I need to use my foam pads for covering the hole. So just move that one along a bit. Then this one's going to go about here. And that's my first level done. So now I can look at the design and see what's new on there that I need to add. So I've got a leaf here, one kind of down there, and one there, uh, one of these, and I've already got that, one of those, a little sunflower up there, I probably should be doing this a bit more methodically <laughs> rather than just randomly selecting bits. Um, okay, and then I think with that and then one of these orange Um, and no flourishes. Not sure what you'd call it. There we go. Okay, so that's all the ones that are showing on my next layer on the guide. So I can add these. And this time I'm going to use some foam pads to give them a bit more depth. And also that will help me to cover up the twine because I can put this so that it's, you know, taller than that twine. Let's start with the sunflower and any foam pads that you've got will do for this. For this leaf up here, I think I'm going to add two levels of foam because it's got to go around the edge of that twine. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and put the foam directly onto the wreath base and then just put one bit on there, peel the top off, put another bit on top and that's going to give me that depth to make sure the leaf would definitely sit above the cord. But before I stick that on, I'll do this gold leaf as that'll kind of go a little bit underneath the red one. Oh, sticking it to my fingers. It's not ideal. <laughs> okay, so that one is kind of there. Just realized I'm missing one of these, which is on my diagram at this point. So let's put that back in. And then this one will sit on top of these double layers to start hiding the cord behind there. And I've got this leaf. So to make this one go above the sunflower and the gold leaf, what I'm gonna do is put the foam pads onto the edge of the gold leaf and the sunflower so that I get that extra depth. But to give it some more stability, I'm gonna double foam this part of the base. So now it's going to sit evenly across all of these different patterns. 
Mm. Yeah. If you haven't quite lined it up right so you can still f- see the foam pads, you should be able to just sort of pick them up and move them a little bit. Got my berries down here. I'm not sure if it is berries because they're brown and I think berries would probably be red. But in the absence of anything else, I will call them berries. Because that's going to be overlapping. I don't want to put any foam in that outer bit. Okay, so I'm just working through all of these to get to the point where they're all stuck on um, with one layer of foam. And of course you could still glue some of these as we are still, you know, in a lot of places this is still the first bit of colour or imagery that's going there. So don't feel like you have to do exactly the same as what I'm doing. The beauty of this design is it is so customizable. You can do whatever you want with it and it's going to turn out great. Okay, here's this one. Managed to stick the top of the foam to it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that goes about there. So what I'm going to do now is just pause the video and go ahead and stick the rest of these ones with my foam pads. And then when I'm ready to move on to the next layer of graphics, I will come back and show you how to do that. I've stuck down all of those now, so it's time to start adding the next layer according to my little diagram. So again, to start with, I'm just going to place everything roughly where it needs to go and then I can start thinking about what layering I might want to do with the foam pads to get it all to stand out nicely from that background. So I'm still sort of following my guide to see what I've got in all of these different places. And the nice thing is if you find that you maybe have a gap that you weren't expecting, you can just cut another one of any of the shapes to fill in that gap. So, you know, if you need to, you can cut more of all of the different pictures. I'm thinking that might actually be all of them. Oh no, I've got one of those in there. There aren't actually that many for this one. Okay. Fine. All right. So I don't have an awful lot to play with this go. Um, so this leaf up here, that's going to need the two levels of foam again. So it sits over the thread. I'll do the same where I put it directly on the base. two bits there and you can play about with tucking the edges under different ones seeing what you prefer on top so um, you see I just sort of pulled the edge of that leaf out to put it on top of that one for this wreath I might or laurel whatever you want to call it I'm actually going to glue this one as that's still a big area of the base that doesn't have anything on it there and then these oh, I've already stuck that one kind of come out becomes a bit of a memory game to try and remember what you have stuck and what you haven't so this one it goes in there and then I think it's just these left really this one didn't have an awful lot of um things on it because this is going to overhang quite a lot, I might only need two little foam pads on it. And then that goes like that. All right, on to the next one already. Oh no, it's still got this one. You might find that it's easier to stick them one at a time 
rather than placing them as I'm doing. Uh, in my head, I kind of had it thinking that placing it would be easier just in case you want to move any of them about. But it is getting a bit tricky to remember what I have and haven't done. All right, let's put that one there. And now I can definitely move on to the next layer. So that's pumpkin here. And my green pumpkin is going to go in there. Got my yellow laurel here. Oh, no, yellow one, this one. And then the gold pumpkin will go on top of that. I'll probably end up tucking the bottom of that round. There we go, that's better. And then any others? Got this one, which will go there. And this one goes in there. Let's move this up a bit so you can see a little better. Oh, I think I've managed to glue it to my work surface. Yeah, there's a foam pad under there. <laughs> oh dear. Right, there we go. And then all of those are for the next layer. Okay, let's get sticking. Where you've already got lots of layered things, it can be easier to build up your foam pads on what's already there so that you know you're getting a nice even layer. So for this gold leaf, I'm gonna put one foam pad on, which brings this foam pad in line with the leaves over there. Then another one, which brings it one higher. And that means I need one on top of the leaves so that now when I put the pumpkin on, it's gonna be evenly lined up along those two. Let's put that one on there. And then the same, right, for this one, because it's kind of going overlapping everything just a little bit, I'm gonna layer up the foam in the middle space. So one bit there, which would bring it in line with the sunflower and the little berries. One more, because I want it to be above them. And then just because this is kind of a big image, I'll add an extra bit. That leaf's not stuck either. <laughs> the leaf can have one layer. There. And then I need one more piece on top of there so it's even. Then this little pumpkin goes there. And then again, I'm going to do the same for all of the images and then I'll come back to do the final layer and fill in all of the gaps. Time to add the final images. I've got my one leaf, which is going to go in here. A teeny tiny pumpkin for there. And then big sunflowers for that side and that side. And then one more pumpkin to cover up the gap there. So I'm pretty happy with how that is all looking. There's not an awful lot of that base colour left. So yeah, overall I'm really happy with the coverage of that. But if I wasn't, so maybe if I didn't like that there's a gap here or there's still some gaps at the top, I could go and recut any of these graphics just to fill in the little spaces. So here is my sunflower that will go in there. And as there's a lot of gaps, I'm going to add the foam pads to the uh, base itself. And this is going to need three layers so that the sunflower will sit higher than this leaf and this pumpkin. So three layers of foam pad on there. And I'll do it in a few places because I really need this to get a good stick as it's quite a big piece of card. Then one more. Let's just have a look at where it's going to cover. So I think I could probably get away with adding one piece just on the bottom of that leaf and the pumpkin. And that's just going to raise it up, but also give it the extra stability that it's stuck to other 
um, graphics on the page so it'll just be a little bit more secure. Put that where I want. There, and now the other ones. So this one, I will do the same. Put the foam directly on the base, and I need three layers again so that it will be raised above this leaf up here. Three. And add this, oops, in a few places. Add that stability if you can by putting some foam on other parts that are already kind of almost at the same level. And now this can go on top. There. I have my leaf to go in here. And I think as it's not an awful lot raised around it, just two levels of foam would be enough for this one. This is probably the area that I'm least happy with because you can see the most of the base around here. But I don't think it's enough that I need to cut anything else to cover it. So I would just roll with it. Let's check that. There we go. And then I've got my two little sunflowers left, or one sunflower and one pumpkin. So again, I would just pause to get them stuck on and then we'll see the finished effect. Here's my finished wreath with everything stuck down. I'm just going to double check by giving it a little tap, but no, nothing's falling off. So we are all good to go. And this is now ready to be hung up. Now, as it is made from paper, make sure you hang it inside, not outside, because obviously if it gets wet or rained on, then um, unfortunately it won't be any good. But inside, this will look stunning. And it matches perfectly with my other sunflower designs from this Halloween craft countdown. I really hope you've enjoyed the project and I can't wait to see some of your full wreaths inside my Facebook group. Check the link in the description if you want to join us and share your lovely crafty pics. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make this beautiful autumnal wreath. If you'd like to get the free SVG, check out the description of this video or to get all of the SVGs that I've released throughout the Halloween Craft Countdown this year, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Halloween 2021. I really hope that you've enjoyed watching these videos and doing the craft projects as much as I have. I always love doing the Halloween Craft Countdown every year because it pushes me to try new Cricut crafts and I love seeing everything that you make with the designs too. If you'd like to continue crafting with me, please join my Facebook group. Again, the link is in the description and it'd be really lovely to have you in there and to see some of the Halloween or fall crafts that you've been making. As ever, thank you for following along with me and if you'd like more content throughout the rest of the year and dare I say it, a Christmas countdown in a couple of weeks or months. I don't know, it'll be out soon. But anyway, to get those, subscribe to my YouTube channel and then you'll get notified of all of those upcoming designs. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me again for another craft project really soon. Bye!